What's going on? Welcome back to another episode of the wonderful The Arsenio's ESL Podcast. My goodness gracious, we have reached 1 million downloads. This is going to be a story of myself, born and raised in the American craze. I guess you could say the Vegas craze, because, of course, originally from Las Vegas. But my goodness gracious, I cannot believe that I've reached it, that I have hit a million downloads. If you actually put all my other podcasts together and stuff like that, I probably have close to, oh my God, I have no idea, 1.5 to 2 million. But this podcast, to see 1 million downloads, it's officially here, people. You know, I had to go down memory lane because I want to give all my appreciation to every last one of you who've actually tuned into my podcast. My first upload was March 28th of 2018. You have no idea what I was trying to overcome at that time. I am now married. Could you believe that? <laughs> literally, literally, guys, days before the six and a half year, I literally got my 1 million downloads. But March 28th of 2018, I was scared. I was petrified, but I kept on working. I told myself, I think the first ever upload of any podcast of that sort was probably around, oh my God, I would have to say, God, probably 20, oh my, what is it? What is it? 2016, January 3rd. And I told myself, I said, I'm going to do this to overcome me in 2016. Guys, 2016, you don't know me, but you will. My mother being born in Neptune, New Jersey, and my father either in Mississippi or Miami. I don't know much about him. He left my life in 2001, but thank God I ended up being a graceful human being that's going to leave so many marks on humanity. <laughs> that's what I like to do. You know, by the way, uh, man, just I, I shouldn't even be saying this. But my father, uh, in 2015, I was actually sitting in front of one of my students who tried inviting me over to his home, which was actually next to my wife's, my future wife at the time, home. She was driving by December 31st of 2021. And she was like, hey, aren't we nearby? And I looked by and I'm like, oh, he's not here. But anyways, it shows the connection that we actually have. As human beings and being in a country now with 70, well, I guess a population of 70 million, man, I'm so grateful because Ping was there when my dad tried adding himself back into my life. And I said, no, 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 you were the exact person you were for me to become the person who I am today. Sometimes we must not allow people back into our life because on our journey, we have to see that, you know what? Maybe, just maybe, it won't make sense. But if you actually connect the dots, that all of the things that I overcome in the 90s, and again, music being that vibrant light, which is still is today in 2024, man, oh man. I got to be unbelievably grateful for what I was able to overcome. And at the same time, look back and say, well, maybe all these things were supposed to happen in order for me to be able to share this message that I have for you all today. In 2016 of January 3rd, I was overcoming the racial discrimination in which Thai society had bestowed upon color people. Man, what in the hell is going on outside? I'm actually, I'm recording this podcast, but I'm looking outside and I'm saying to myself, why is it so dark at 12.30 p.m. and I'm hearing things hit my glass? Please tell me that it's not hell, but it's all, <laughs> I guess we'll hear real soon. But nonetheless, yeah, okay, thank God. It's just a huge rainstorm. <laughs> so much. All right, anyways, with that being said, January 3rd, guys, Napoleon Hill. Just before I canceled the trip that I actually paid for. That's right. I paid for the hotel and a lot of different things, but I canceled it with a friend that I met through the TEFL before I actually moved here to Thailand. And I canceled it because something told me to. 
she was acting very shady. Why would you buy, uh, let's just say, a hotel room with her and another boyfriend, all these other things, guys. I was not, but man, it was nine years ago. 27, but very stupid. But let's just put it this way. I canceled that trip. And then I heard a voice. And this voice was like, go to Siam Paragon, one of the premier shopping centers out here in Bangkok, Thailand. One of the first biggest in all of Southeast Asia. So I went there. I walked down the personal development aisle. I didn't even know what that meant at the time. And then I said, my goodness gracious. Well, look at here. What is the law of success by Napoleon Hill? And that's what jump started my journey, along with so many other books that have guided me, especially Napoleon Hill and now Brenda Bouchard, in which the high performance, which you guys actually hear on a, let's just say a monthly or <laughs> bi-monthly basis. But I could tell you that in my darkest days, bred my finest hours, the first ever First ever Facebook, what is it? The banner that you could actually put on Facebook in 2015 was that quote. And I was wearing my gray suit, which I got customized and fitted at an Indian shop in the middle of Bangkok. Me living on the outskirts at the time. And I have to give myself a shout out then because during those times, 2015, 2016, especially 2016, I still remember working for a company that was like, you know what, to be honest with you, it's very hard to market a black guy. It was a Thai man at the time, in which I actually saw about a year ago at the hospital when my wife and I were there, and I hurry up and looked away, and I said, I'm not going to go back to that. Because he told me that eight years ago, and I said, what? And I was getting ready to do another massive presentation and I saw some of the parents that I worked at the kindergarten at that time, back in 2013, they were there three years later and the mother came up to me and I haven't spoke to her since, but she was like, listen, thank you so much for all these different things. Guys, this podcast set me on a journey of freedom, a freedom of my soul, a freedom of who I am as an individual. And more importantly, for everyone else out there, whether you are being marginalized or anything else, sometimes using your voice, Stephen Covey, going back to Stephen Covey, being able to use my voice to steer myself and maybe thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions on their journey. I cannot begin to tell myself now, being in this English language podcast right here, TOEFL, baby, it's all about TOEFL. Man, I cannot believe that I was able to achieve this with TOEFL. But did I put that as an end goal? I did not. There are a lot of people out there that are like, okay, in my blog, I'm going to achieve this. And when I achieve it, I'm going to be so happy. But yet they're miserable, fall into depression. They feel that they weren't fulfilled. There was one girl who I was following, probably 2021, 2022 at latest, right at the beginning. And she was like, oh, when I reach 1 million blog follows or this much amount of money. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Ready to plug into the future? Join myself, Sean Leahy. And me, Andrew Maynard. On Modem Futura where we explore the technologies shaping our futures. We bring the experts, the insights, and a whole lot of curiosity to every episode of Modem Futura as we boldly go where <laughs> no one else has gone. So join us as we navigate the intersection of innovation and humanity, uncovering the stories that will define our collective futures. Subscribe to Modem Futura wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you there. See you then. was so miserable that's because your intent wasn't in the right place see some of you probably feel that you're so inadequate it's because that you probably set your intent in a different direction from where your values and what you actually believe in is going let's say east west west east 
north, south, southwest, oh, southwest, sorry, south, north. But with that being said, I didn't know what I was doing in the beginning stages of my career, but I was documenting it. I had conversations. And then people who I met probably back in 2008 started giving me people at that time, eight years later, 2008, 2016, Mike Chesniak, who ultimately became a high performance coach in which I followed the number one, Brendan Burchard, in high performance coaching. I just, I can't, I can't believe it how the people you've met, even dating back to when before, I mean, got to be 21 years old. He guided me. I went to Vietnam. His parents were from Vietnam. I saw some things in the Remnants War Museum. We disagreed on, and then we parted ways. You have to understand, amongst your journey, there are going to be purposeful relationships. I could tell you right now, going through what I actually had here, April 26th of 2018, just a month before, I met someone by the name of Anna. Anna! Of Hanoi, born and raised Hanoi, Vietnam. Funny that two years prior, met someone who I met eight years prior, who steered me in the direction of giving me, what is it? I think it was the second or third interview of my personal development podcast, Anna. After I did that podcast with her, next thing you know, about six months later, she was working for CP out here in Thailand. Probably the top three most, oh my God, let's just say the, the organization that has made the most money in the world. <laughs> Not in the world, but let's just say Southeast Asia. But at the time, I didn't know what CP was. Back then, now I'm like, hey, fuck you, CP. But Anna, I remember meeting her for the first time at Starbucks. We met on my podcast. Man, the way I was actually doing that podcast based on recording six and a half years ago. You guys can't even imagine. Man, I had to record it with my Bose speaker at the time to make sure I got her audio. You guys could look that up very easily, whatever platform you're listening to. You're going to hear me. Arsenio's ESL podcast, episode 18, international guest speaker, Anna of Hanoi. We do no, we no longer speak. I saw her about five years ago in Vietnam and Dalat. That was an extraordinary trip to be able to be in just the absolute cold and go into just absolute heat of Thailand. It was amazing to meet the people I did during that time. Listen, I'm grateful for everyone whether it be short or long, who has entered my life. There was another girl from Indonesia that I had met and she ended up getting married and so many other things. But most notably in May, oh, May 14th, listen, we recorded this podcast in my hotel room. Kim Kim, that's right. She was going to a university out there in Singapore. She was my student out here in Thailand. To this day, in about a month for Christmas, she's going to be coming over with her now fiance to have Christmas dinner with me in which she already had just a year ago. I could tell you right now, if I can tell you and give you any guidance in life, relationships, they don't have to be a many. A lot of you out there have a lot of relationships. But man, when it came to Kim Kim and her being my friend and my everything in my life. I cannot believe, I, I swear to God, literally just like four months ago, she was over and I just kept laughing and laughing. I think I have fun, uh, but my, what is it, laughing gas? What is that? I just saw excited. I think that, yeah, oh my God, I can't believe NO2. Yeah, that's right. Oh my God, I used to be a dental assistant before being a teacher, but man, I just saw excited. I was just laughing my ass off and I was laughing and laughing and I kept making fun of feng shui. There ain't no goddamn Chinese listening to my podcast anyways. Don't give a damn. Taiwanese, you guys might laugh. Feng Shui is the place where they actually make copies of a lot of things. My wife bought a coffee machine, and I was just looking at her. She was trying to start it, and Kim Kim was there, who I made a podcast with May 14th of 2018, episode number 30, Kim Kim of Thailand. That's right. She was here. She was here. And I can't get the Feng Shui. And, uh, you know, my wife was like, 
I paid one thousand bucks, like thirty dollars, uh, of this goddamn coffee machine. I said, "That's that feng shui, baby." <laughs> I just kept pissing her off. <laughs> Looking at me, laughing and laughing with her boy, well, fiance, well, boyfriend at the time, fiance now. Oh my god, I'm just laughing my ass off, man. And I just relationships are the most important. It doesn't matter the quantity; it's all about the quantity. I'll say that one more time: quality over quantity. If you can look back on all of my international guest speakers, just put. In Spotify, whatever place that you're actually getting this podcast. International guest speaker Arsenio. Everyone who you've seen before 2020, or let's just say 2020 and before, I no longer speak to. Anna, I, I believe last time I spoke to her was, I think, oh man, third, fourth quarter of 2020, I would believe at max first quarter of 2021 for sure i doubt it by then because me i was on my hustle <laughs> i was building my business online no way no way no how right and i was already involved with you know my now wife but at the time friend Rosarín. and man i'm just it doesn't you know looking through this podcast and looking through all the things of season one there is there are Present continuous, can, can't, adverbs of manner, all these beautiful things, man. God, I'm so grateful for it. There are people who I've had massive disagreements with. Isabel, okay? You could put Arsenio Isabel, okay? That's for my Latinos, of course, Central and South America. But, you know, in Spain. But if you put Isabel, I-S-A-B-E-L, in Arsenio, my goodness gracious. Me and her, we were best of friends. I think I have the first interview up, and I will always. But then next thing you know, COVID happened. And even before COVID, her attitude just changed. All her comments on my Facebook at the time, when I used to post on Facebook, I never get on Facebook now. I get on Facebook like once a month. <laughs> it's crazy. But, at the, you know, she just started, like, becoming very senile and, wanted to start up arguments and I'm like Isabel you were one of the greatest people I met at a time that I needed you it's a purposeful relationship Lisa Nichols look it up Lisa Nichols abundance now a book that it has made me understand so much about relationships where it comes and it ends it doesn't necessarily end in term of you will never speak to that person again. But the purpose has been met. And when relationships, for all of you listening to me around the world, it takes that detour, you'll end up realizing, like, what the fuck happened? Can we just go back to what we were supposed to do? Or, like, what we were before? Have you ever met that? Listen, for all of you still listening to me right now, have you ever had that opportunity to say to you, you know what, looking back on all my past relationships and friendships, in that specific one, why can't we just go back to what we used to be? Because the purpose was met. That's called connecting the dots. Man. Looking at everything. And Luke Burroughs, he was another individual that I put onto my podcast. And oh my God, among so many other people. Goodness gracious. And going back to what I said just a couple of weeks ago, some people try to minimize me. The Korean lady, I applied to her job. She didn't want to hire me because I was black back in 2016. Going back. Since 2016 and Napoleon Hill and all the things that I had to overcome during that time. Oh, yes, yes, yes. She was one of those individuals. And to be honest with you, there were so many other people that made me realize that I do have confidence. Looking back at that job saying, you know what? No, although I advertise this amount, I'm going to pay you half. Because you're black. I said, uh, no. 
I ended up working for her. She paid me a little bit more. Her and another white teacher from America laughed and said, oh, oh, oh yeah, she's going to be a great student. Oh, it was like, it was kind of like one of those internal jokes that I never understood. I met those two. They were millionaires. One, I ended up teaching probably about a year and a half later at another program way outside hers. How beautiful is that? And I said, oh my God, I haven't seen you in a long time. She's like, do you still work for her? I don't work for that fucking peneja for all my Latinos for the fucking bitch. <laughs> no, dumbass. It's actually dumbass. You know, I just want to <laughs> intensify it a little bit. You know, I'll just make it more sexy. Yeah, name October 9th of 2018. I met her for the first time two years later, probably about September of 2020, when they started like, alleviating some things okay out here in thailand open up okay drink some little beer some alcohol that good stuff i met yanine for the first time we had a big fallout because she fucked me over she's like oh are you still gonna come out it was like 7 30 i was like uh no it's 7 30 and she just bitched me out all this stuff and the next thing you know we reconvened about a year late no, a year and a half later and I was like hey do you remember what happened she's like oh, no uh, whatever but I met her for the first time, and it was awesome. She's from the Honduras. I met I no, I don't speak to her anymore. This was literally a four years plus ago. I met her for that second time, and we danced salsa. One of the greatest nights of dancing salsa of my life. No, 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 not one. The, the Cubana at the microphone. The Colombiana, who was being a puta at the time, she was just like, uh, no, we don't dance like that in Cuba. I said, uh-uh, Puerto Ricans, we adapt, okay? I don't know about you Colombians, but us Puerto Ricans, we adapt, so fuck you. Okay, oh my goodness gracious, man. <laughs> you had Thai women oh, at that time. Oh, Lord Jesus. I remember at my time, or at the time, my friend, now my wife, she was like, you know what? No, just hang out a little bit longer. It was 10.30 p.m. I swear to God, I was already old at the time. I was, I was barely like 31, 32. And I was like, nah, man, I'm going home. I couldn't even order grab. At the time, I could actually order a motorcycle to pick me up and take me home. But I was like, nah, the, the train shuts down at 12. I got to get home right now. And I remember there was a, a British woman and a Russian who traveled all the way from a province about two uh, hours away a place called Rayong, and they were looking at me, and oh my goodness gracious, it was an incredible night. At that time, I had my second ever international student from Spain, living in Hokkaido, Japan, who contacted me by email because of this podcast right here that you're actually listening to this. I can kid you not. One of the most amazing moments of my life, 2020. That COVID, as much uncertainty and how much that took out of me and my personality. And I was like, listen, I don't know, you know, I don't know what else to do. You know, I can't believe this. I can't believe that and all these other things. And I'm just as, as scared as I was at that time. It brought people into my life who I hadn't spoken to and like, before I went to college, Danya Gonzalez, and I'll speak to her anymore. I invited her to my wedding just last year, but she got a boyfriend. And in America, when you get a boyfriend, that's it. <laughs> that's it. You cut off all relationships. I don't know what it is about American women. It doesn't matter. Any background. I don't give a shit Filipino, Mexican, oh, my mom's Puerto Rican. I don't give a fuck. American's American. American is American. <laughs> when they get her into a relationship, and I've dealt with this, even the girl that I'm actually staring at on my wall, me kissing my wife, luckily, that little bush, and you know, what? what, what is the thing that the, the bridesmaids, they actually hold? What is it? Oh, my God, whatever. Okay, with that little bush that's being held in front of her face, I'm very grateful that it wasn't shown. Because to be honest with you, her being a pilot came here with her sister, her sister being a doctor from Arizona, came all the way out here, 
And the thing with Americans is they don't value friendships. I've known Lindsay for 20 years this day. And not one word this year. As much as I have said to her. That's another thing. In terms of high performance, Arsenio, what have you learned? All these people who I'm talking about, whether it's Yanin, who I haven't spoken to in four years plus, okay? Anna, I literally deleted her out of my life, okay? So many others. I told you about Isabel. I told you about, oh my God, there was a guy from the Bahamas that was incredible. Okay, that was an incredible podcast. That was right there. March or April of 2020. Oh my God. I forgot what his name was, but if you put Bahamas, Arsenio, and whatever you are listening to this in terms of podcasts, you'll find it. There's some great stuff, man. And it feels so good to look back. It's kind of like looking back on, what is it? Looking back on what you have actually, like a photo album, my podcasts are my photo album, essentially. And again, I probably skipped over so many other people. I can't remember. Man, I've I've, I've brought so many people up. <laughs> but, I, you know, those are the first four that actually came up, okay? Indonesia, Vietnam, Germany. Ooh, Russia. I brought Russia on, okay? Uh, Veronica, that's right. Oh, <clears throat> just came across April 20, 2019, 42 minutes. That's right. Veronica was exceptional. Amazing. My best friend, Andres, A-N-B-R-E-S of Puerto Rico. If you want to know a lot about me, that was almost a one hour, two minute shy podcast. And that one exploded. Holy God. I didn't even know how many plays that had. Oh boy, because Andres is everything to me. Simona of Simona was exceptional. That was uh, I actually recorded this podcast while I was in Singapore. And oh my god, visa problems. These motherfuckers out here in Thailand, they're racist as shit. But Simona of Canada, she was amazing. Katarina, if you really want to know some good personal development stuff, Katarina. Katarina Oh my God, if you put Katarina, K-A-T-A-R-I-N-A with my name, oh man, you're going to find some amazing podcasts. I brought her on after that and so many other times and I wasn't even, you know, breaking stuff up at the time. But listen, if you go through all my podcasts from 2018 to 2019, to put it into perspective, all of those people in my life was a purposeful relationship. Those were people that I needed in one way or another. Get Listen, I had a student and what is it? In August, what is it? August 4th of 2019. Someone from Peru. I tried bringing on everyone from every single country. I had Namibia. If you put Arsenio in Namibia, you'll hear that. If I had Arsenio uh, Australia, you'll hear that. Okay, if you had Arsenio, any country, whatever country, Turkey, I got Turkey, baby. I got Turkey. I still, I can't remember her name, but she's kind of an asshole. But actually, she was a personal development coach at the time. She was actually pretty cool when I actually, well, you know, when I met her and stuff like that. But man, Lore from Belgium, Belgium, for everyone else, incredible. Oh, Mira of South Africa. 189 plays November 9th of 2019. I am shocked that it was only that much. Mira transformed my life completely with her transformation program and her life coaching program at the time. Mira, if you were to ask me, Arsenio, out of all the things that you have done today, who was the single greatest, most powerful transformation of your life, Mira? Without a doubt. She was a transformation coach from South Africa. And me and her, we had a falling out in 2020, August, September 11th, 2020. I met my now wife. Mira was put into my life 
is a purposeful relationship. As the universe or whatever you believe in, God or the Allah or this, Buddha, you name it, whatever you believe in. Mira, I met her in November and we had a long conversation into like 10 p.m. my time. Three hours worth laughing and laughing and laughing. We did a collaboration right after. But listen, COVID happened. Man, that conversation was absolute foolishness. It was the greatest thing. I just kept making her laugh. She had a son, a absolutely stout mother. Man, her mother was the greatest thing since sliced bread, I swear. And she broke me down from healing sessions, the inner conflict therapy, bank pattern, subcoded, all these things that I learned so much over the years. And built me back up through some of the hardest times, trying times, July and August of 2020, me getting rid of a bullshit ass company out here in Thailand, this butch ass woman who I was working with for about three and a half years saying, you know what, and if you can't get a high score in TOEFL ITB, you know what, I, we could just hire another teacher from here. And, blah, 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 blah. and she just completely disparaged me. And I said, enough is enough. I told her partner or the nickname AOR at the time. Hey, that bitch, you don't deserve me no more. She cried and cried and cried. And I saw her that one last time, gave her a fucking CD player back. It was hilarious. It was probably just a week before I actually met my now wife. And that was the end. That's, those are the stories of this podcast. How beautiful is that? Guys, I just want to say, when it comes to you developing into the person who you are are you willing to embark on that journey are you willing to embark on that journey my first podcast 2016 january 3rd i embarked on it march 23rd oh, i'm sorry march 27th this podcast was born and here i am today with 1 million downloads, helping people who have actually contacted me and probably tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of others who have actually listened to this podcast, took my techniques and got whatever it was to take them to that next level. I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of you beautiful souls in every country around the world and every continent, including Antarctica, as of six weeks ago, somebody, one play, listened to me in, act in Antarctica, Antarctica, whatever the fuck it is, and it wasn't a penguin, it was a human, and I could say that, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for listening to me. And if you're still listening to this podcast, I appreciate it so much because it means so much to me to be able to be heard and to influence other people, to leave my mark on humanity, society, you name it. It was all because of you, hearing you, seeing the views and being able to associate myself with so many cultures, creeds, colors, you name it, religious. I don't know. Human is human to me. That's what it is right here. Thank you so much for supporting my podcast. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Over and out.